In previous tutorials, we have used data from Spotify that quantifies every song by the rock band Iron Maiden. We stored these data in a tibble called Edify, and we calculated the average energy score of Iron Maiden's songs. And in this tutorial, we discover how code chunks are rendered in a Quarto document, and also how to debug errors when rendering Quarto documents goes wrong. Okay, so just finally, um, something very important about rendering documents is they um, a document is rendered from top to bottom so it starts at line one and it goes through to the bottom line as it's rendering um, and this is important to bear in mind because while we're working on the document we can skip about code chunks uh, executing them with a little green arrow and whatever we execute it will uh, you know, it will create an object that's in our working environment and R will be able to find that object once it's created. But when we render, it's like a blank slate. So everything we've created doesn't exist anymore. It just starts at the top of the document and works its way down. So let's, for example, have a look at this final bit of code that we wrote. Let's, I'm going to get rid of it. And I'm going to put it right at the beginning instead. So we'll put that code chunk up here instead. And now I'm going to render the document and see what happens. And in our render document, it shows us the error, but we also can see it in the um, console. And it says quitting from lines 20 to 22, blah, 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 object edify not found, etc., etc., etc. Now it's a lot of red, it can be quite confusing. However, this bit here is a big clue, quitting from line 20 to 22. Now we've done all of our work in the visual editor, but if you click up here on source, you get to see uh, sort of what's going on behind the visual editor. And we get some uh, line numbers as well, which is handy. So it says it's quitting from line 20 to 22, which means the problem is in the code between lines 20 and 22. Look at what's in the code there, it's this code that creates the average um, energy or calculates the average energy levels and then tries to display it. So there's a problem with that, which might seem weird because we've already executed that code and it worked. But remember, we moved it. So what's going on here is R is pro processing the document line by line. It gets to line 20 and we say to it, oh, can you apply the mean function to the object edify dollar energy? In other words, the energy variable within edify. Again, if we go back to our error message, it's saying object edify not found. That's because at this point, working from the top of the document, edify doesn't exist. We haven't read the data in yet. So when we try to execute this bit of code, R doesn't know what edify is. It hasn't been created. So by moving that code chunk to, to earlier in the document, it's kind of messed things up because we don't actually read in the edify data until way down here on line 79. So we're trying to get R to use something that we haven't yet created. Now, if we, for example, took this code up to the top as well, in fact, I always think it's pretty good practice to have a code chunk at the beginning where you, you load any libraries that you might want to load and also you read in any data that you might want to read in. So I quite often do that. I'll just have a code chunk right at the beginning that um, reads, uh, reads the data in and uh, it does all my library commands. So if you move it above, now we're creating the edify object here. We're reading the data in before we try to use it. And when we render the document, it should now work. And indeed it does. So important kind of, uh, I guess, tip there is, I'll go back to the visual editor. Important kind of tip there is if you get an error message when you're rendering, always look at the line number that it's pointing you to, go into the source view, find that line and try to work out why it's not working. And always think about if it's saying it can't find an object, always think about the order in which you've written your code. So is it the case that you've actually created the object that you are then trying to use.
Okay, so they are the basics of, uh, you know, using code in R and using code in Quarto. Um, the next step will be to look at the tutorial on how to use my uh, Discover and Adventure interactive tutorials in R and then start learning, start learning some code. Good luck.